Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor for the online botanical medicine class. My name is Stephanie Georgiev. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. And if you would like to participate in the online course, which will begin in early 2024, click the links below for a free introductory video and handouts. Now, on the day of this posting, it is Christmas Day for many of the world's Christians, and some sects celebrate in January, and since I was raised in an ecumenical household, we celebrated everything. Uh, we celebrated Christmas, both Christmases, until January the 10th, actually. Now, in any case, in many parts of the Northern Hemisphere, before the onslaught of industrial agriculture and shipping food all over the world uh, through airplanes, receiving an orange in your Christmas stocking was a real treat. And it was certainly that way for my mother in the 1930s in Pennsylvania. Now, at that time, oranges in December were quite expensive in the colder regions because they had to travel large distances, mostly by truck, maybe by train, but mostly by truck. And it was a rare delicacy for the bulk of the people in those northern areas. Now, I grew up in Southern California in Orange County, which back in the late 1800s and up through the 1970s, citrus was a major cash crop for much of the region. And when I was practicing medicine in Redlands, California, which is part of what is called the Inland Empire, this was the area where all the citrus growers and rich people from the East Coast would come to winter. And some of the old decals for citrus boxes showed snow-capped mountains in the distance with blossoming citrus trees. Um, not many of the old groves still exist, but there are some people that are trying to preserve them. And uh, oranges are just uh, citrus in general, but orange this time of year is quite, quite amazing. Now, when I lived in Redlands, I can tell you I've never tasted such incredible citrus in all my life. And from December through April, it was citrus season. In fact, it is citrus season everywhere these incredible trees grow. And so this is the reason I chose orange for this week's Herb of the Week on the Botanical Medicine Study Course channel. And after the new year, we'll be exploring other types of citrus. I was actually gonna just make this all citrus for Christmas day, but I realized that the video would last about four hours. It's a, quite, a, quite a prolific subject. So we're gonna split it up. But for today, for Christmas, I hope you have an orange in your Christmas stocking. And for those who are not celebrating Christmas today, you can still enjoy these amazing gifts from nature. Now, the large citrus fruit of today evolved originally from small edible berries over millions of years. Now, citrus species began to diverge from a common ancestor about 15 million years ago. And this is about the same time that Severnia, uh, which is also known as Chinese box orange, Di diverged from the same ancestor. Now, about 7 million years ago, the ancestors of citrus split into the main genus citrus and the genus pun cereus, or it's also known as a trifolate orange. Um, and these have been hybridized with all sorts of different citrus and they're used as root stock. Now the estimates are made, um, the reason they know all of this, uh, they weren't you know, intuiting it or something like that, but they were using genetic mapping of plant chloroplasts. That, that's a heck of a, a doctoral thesis, isn't it? And a DNA study published in Nature, the, uh, the um, wonderful magazine Nature, in 2018 concludes that the citrus first evolved in the foothills of the Himalayas in the area of Assam, also known for its famous tea. 
and also in the western Yunnan province in China and northern Myanmar. So that's where these amazing things started. Now there's three ancestral original fundamental species in the genus Citrus associated with modern citrus. And this shows all the different places that these things have originated, this really interesting map. And uh, there's all sorts of modern citrus cultivars such as mandarin orange, pomelo, and citron. And we will be exploring those in future videos. So keep, stay tuned. But almost all of the common commercially imported important citrus fruits, such as sweet oranges, lemons, grapefruits, etc., are hybrids involving these three species with one another and their main progenies. Now there are wild citrus species which have diverged in the last thousand years or so. Now citrus and specifically orange is a genus of flowering trees and shrubs which is in the rue family, rutaceae, and obviously in this genus are all of our favorite citrus fruits. Um, the only one we'll be looking at today is oranges. And as we can see, these this is native to all of these places on the map. And the one that isn't included here is in Australia. And we know that different cultivars started spreading to Micronesia and Polynesia, and, and also Australia about 3,000 years before the Common Era. And then we know, because of these genetic chloroplast studies, that um, the, the citrus started moving into the Middle East and into the Mediterranean about 1,200 years before the Common Era. And this happened mainly because of the incense trade route. And as soon as things hit Constantinople um, or the Bosporus, Asia Minor, that's when that became the gateway to Europe. And during the age of exploration, that's when things went into the Americas. Now there are all sorts of citrus and they're all delicious in their own way, but the guiding quality of citrus, and particularly it's the one that comes to mind with oranges, is vitamin C and bioflavonoids. And both of these substances are vital to human health. Now, anybody that's taken any kind of nutrition class, even in grade school, you will have heard of the disease of scurvy, uh, which thankfully we really don't see these days. <laughs> um, but usually you hear about a vitamin C deficiency that results in scurvy where people are losing their teeth and they bleed and they don't heal and all kinds of stuff. And this was noticed in sailors during the age of exploration when long sea voyages were the norm in trade routes between continents. And before this, the, the trade routes were always along the land. So there, it, you were never uh, on sea for more than a few days. And so people didn't seem to have nutritional deficiencies <laughs> until the age of exploration. Now, when they figured this out, what was causing the problem, it was basically a last, lack of fresh fruits and vegetables. Limes were given to sailors to combat the disease. And this is where the nickname came for sailors as limeys. Now, that's, you know, what makes the orange so great. Now, obviously, in all citrus, there's vitamin C and bioflavonoids. But I think if we polled people, they would say, well, how do you get vitamin C? And people would say oranges. And they would be right. You would pass your nutrition exam. Now, there are many different parts of the orange uh, which are used medicinally. Um, the peel, uh, in some types of citrus, we use the seeds, and we can also use the seeds of oranges. The essential oil, which comes from the peel, we can use the leaves, and we also use the flowers 
And we'll see in future videos, the Chinese really get particular with this. But for the orange, these are the basic things that are used medicinally. Now, the sweet orange that most of us enjoy as snacks or uh, will plant in our gardens or in container gardens is known as citrus sinensis. And sinensis, you know, in Latin means from China. So this is a nod to the genetic origins of this delicious fruit. And if you go to some very traditional Chinese restaurants, um, much to the chagrin of most Americans, they don't really serve uh, fortune cookies. They give you slices of orange. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> and we'll talk about that. Um, you know, it basically helps digestion. And uh, oranges are a nutritional powerhouse. They're packed with vitamins and minerals. We often think only vitamin C, but they also have potassium and they have calcium in there. And um, all of these things we know are just so good for us. Um, they're very good for our hearts, our skin, our blood vessel. Uh, they reduce inflammation boosts the body immune system to protect us against vi uh, viruses and germs. Also, what I, uh, orange does is it improves iron absorption, okay? And for those of you who have to take iron as a supplement, often there will be vitamin C that's usually derived from orange uh, in the supplement or your physician or healthcare provider or nutritionist will say, Hey, when you swallow this pill of iron, take it with some orange juice. And that's a very good suggestion. Um, also oranges in their, uh, natural state, uh, peeled of course are very high in fiber and fiber is really good for evening out sugar metabolism. And the reason why it's better to eat an orange rather than to drink the juice is the juice, unless you put it in a blender, um, you don't get a lot of fiber in the juice. And that puts the juice and the sugar right into the blood system as a big dump. And if you eat the orange, then the fiber helps release the sugar into the blood system in a slower way and your body can deal with it better. Um, as I said, uh, calcium, it, uh, one orange uh, has 6% of your daily requirement of calcium. It's 55 milligrams of calcium. And it also has vitamin B, folic acid and folate, those different wonderful things. So this is, this is a really good way to get your B vitamins in you is through this. Uh, obviously there's natural sugars, um, which your body knows what to do with and potassium, which is really good for your heart and your muscle function. And if you have hypertension, you just eat an orange, it's good for you. And it actually helps lower that. And we can see all of the different things that sweet orange does for you. Now, the orange peel, uh, some people really like to eat orange peel. And we know that it has all kinds of amazing properties. It's antiseptic, it's anti-inflammatory, it's uh, an expectorant, so it's good for coughs, getting stuff out of your lungs. It's good for getting rid of fungus. It obviously smells really good. Gets your digestive juices running as a bitter ton tonic. It's a stimulant. I don't know how this works, but it's a stimulant and a relaxant. And for those of you who are were kids in the 60s and 70s and 80s, you remember those old certs commercial. It's two things in one. So this is a stimulant and a relaxant all in one. It's also a diuretic and it helps relieve pain and it's antibacterial. Now it's also helps uh, get rid of fleas. And if you put in the bath water of your pets, do this outside because the fleas will jump ship in mass. Um, but it's really good to put in there. Um, and it's also, you know, it, it uh, gets rid of germs and bacteria. And for those of you, uh, people who are very 
vigilant about uh, your cleaning products, you'll notice that orange oil is in a lot of those cleaning products. And that's why it's a really good uh, antibacterial, antiseptic, and it helps clean things. Now, the um, orange peel gives us essential oils. And most of the things that are wonderful about the peel are basically because of the essential oil. And as you can see, this is sort of redundant from the last slide. And it's really, really a wonderful thing to have. And orange oil is reasonably priced and it's usually pretty safe to put on your skin straight. Um, obviously do a little patch test. I don't recommend doing this to infants. Uh, and small children, but do a little patch test. If you don't break out in welts and start hyperventilating, you should be fine. Um, but the oil I find really, um, I just love the smell of orange oil. Uh, in the olden days when I had a garbage disposal in, in my sink, I would always put orange peels down there to grind up and it always made everything smell so wonderfully. Um, it's really, really a nice oil. It's inexpensive and I highly recommend having it in your essential oil collection. Now the flowers of the orange tree produce wonderful products. And one of them is called Neroli essential oil and orange flower oil uh, is the distillate, um, the hydrosol that comes from this process. And it's really lovely. It's also incredibly expensive, but one of my favorite essential oil companies, uh, Oracacia, sells a 10% blend, which runs you anywhere from 10 to $15. And you get wonderful results from that. Um, and also you can get the orange uh, flower uh, water. And usually you can get that in Arab stores, Indian stores and Arab stores. The Arabs use it a lot um, in their cooking. It's really delightful to add that. Um, it's uh, known to help relieve uh, physical aches and pains. It soothes agitative nerves. It's really good for the nervous system. Um, it just helps calm you down. Topically, it's very good at healing scars and stretch marks. It helps tone the skin, reduces the signs of wrinkles. Um, it also helps relieving itching and sensitive skin. So it's nice to put in baths um, or use the orange flower water like a toner or something like that. It's really good. I love the smell of it personally. Now, cooking with uh, oranges is really quite delicious. And you can cook the whole thing. You can add juice to stuff like salad dressings or, you know, into soups, or if you're steaming vegetables, you can also grate the orange peel directly into whatever it is that you're making. It's also really good in sweet as well as savory dishes. And in, you know, those of you who really like Chinese food, you know, orange chicken is really yummy. And uh, so you just know, um, orange is also really good with um, fish. Um, there's a really yummy salad that I picked up when I was uh, working at um, Copia in Napa, where it was uh, sliced fresh fennel uh, bulbs with uh, orange sections and uh, red onion and um, capers and smoked salmon it was quite delish. So I've given you a link in the program notes with some wonderful orange recipes. Now growing oranges is very versatile. You don't have to live in the areas where the, it originated, the citrus originated. You can grow them in pots. Now, for those of us living in Southern California, oranges are everywhere. They have nonprofit foundations that come and pick them because they, they're just everywhere. They're rolling down the street and this is valuable, valuable fruits. And so they, they glean them 
and the, you know, they'll say, Hey, can we come and pick all your oranges for you? And obviously they'll give some to you, but nobody can eat all the oranges uh, that, that you have on your tree. So they'll give them to homeless shelters and um, food pantries. But if you're living in a colder area, you can always have one in a container. And this is how people did it in Western Europe. Uh, you know, during uh, even Eastern Europe in areas where it's rather cold in the winter, you take your orange uh, trees out in the, the spring and summer and let the bees go to, to town. And then you bring them in, you know, in late November, and then you have these amazing fruits. So I also have a wonderful link in the program notes on how to grow oranges. So however you want to incorporate this incredible gift of nature into your life, either by eating them raw or incorporating the peel in teas, things like that, the essential oil, the neroli, the flower essential oil, or the hydrosol, there's just no lack of wonderful ways to enjoy this incredible gift from nature. So keep me in mind, click below to all the wonderful links that I've included. And also if you want information on the upcoming botanical medicine course, there's a link there so you can download a video and handouts, get a little taste of what's to come. And I hope however you're celebrating this delightful day that you are happy and peaceful and enjoying some sort of delicious food. And for those who are celebrating Christmas, I wish you many blessings on your festival. And until next time, this is Stephanie Georgiev saying, be well. <laughs>